guys, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a journal cover tutorial and it's part of my napkin series. And here's the gorgeous napkin that I'm using, Summer Dahlia. And that can be bought, purchased at nittiesnapkins.com. There's a link in the description box below. So here is this gorgeous napkin. I absolutely love the colors of it. And that's why I selected this. First off, napkin 101, you need to remove the excess plies of napkin. And usually there are two. Here is the quickest way I know. I take a piece of painter's tape. I rub it on my sweatshirt or jeans so it's not quite so tacky. And then I use it to peel off one first one layer and then the other layer. Save those layers because those have usability. And you can check out some of my videos where I'm using them in my art journaling. So what I'm going to do here is water cut the napkin. I want to cut out some of the elements here. And at this point, I'm not exactly sure how many I'm going to use or what. So I'm going to take out all the elements of this napkin and I'm cutting right along the edge. I like this as opposed to cutting it, but you can use a pair of scissors if that's what you prefer. Now, don't be limited to thinking you have to make this into a journal cover. It can be an art journal page. It can be on a canvas, an ATC. You can do a very similar thing. Now, I want to match a stencil to the focal image. And there are lines in that summer dahlia. So I'm choosing the Fantangle stencil. And you'll see how it coordinates and reads really well. Now, I want to have an idea of where my focal image is going to go. So I'm using an Inktense pencil in the same colors as my napkin. And just outlining where it is, just to keep that in mind. So I'm not going to maybe put as much texture and I'm going to use lighter paint because I don't want it to get my napkin to get too dark. I want that image to stay true to the beautiful colors that it already is. So I taped off the coil because I don't want the modeling paste in that coil when I reassemble the cover. And I'm using the Crafters Workshop modeling paste and a palette knife, and I'm putting this on. Now, I'm not going to, or I should say, I am going to put texture underneath where the napkin is, because I like that coming through. I like, especially on a journal cover, I like the look and the feel of the texture. It just makes it all the more special. And because I've picked a pattern that coordinates with it a little bit, it, they all work really well. So if you get modeling paste where you don't want it, you can just scrape it off while it's wet. You can also scrape it off once it's dry. At least with the Crafters Workshop modeling paste, I found this to be true. Now you could have put modeling paste on the entire background. I like it where it's, there's some, and then some places aren't. When you use modeling paste, make sure you wash your stencil ASAP or put it in a tub of water. So I've mixed some yellow oxide with white gesso. My Naples yellow is out, so this is getting me close to that. And I'm putting a base coat of color down. Now, remember where I marked where the uh, napkin's going? I'm keeping that area lighter, and I'm doing that deliberately. Now, if you didn't know that you were going to use the napkin and you had the background, you can always wait for the acrylic paint to dry and then put a coat of white on top of it and lighten that area. Because truth be known, many times we don't know exactly where we're going to go with a page. Sometimes I just start and I create the background and then I start searching for a focal image. 
So I'm playing with the orientation here. All along, I thought I was going on that side, and then I'm thinking, oh, I like this. And what if I put a sentiment? Where would I put that sentiment? I've got this flat space where there is no stenciling. But I'm thinking that would be a great place to put a sentiment or to stamp a sentiment. So I've just kind of cut out a couple sentiments and I'm additioning them on here. So explore the various options. See here I'm even exploring putting the sentiment down here. Now all of these options work. There is no right or wrong. They each have pluses and minuses. At the end of the day, I'm going to pick what just looks good to me. Now I was going to cut this straight edge and then I thought maybe not. See, I'm still playing with the orientation and, you know, second guessing. But instead of cutting, I grab my liner brush and I water cut it. And I'm getting, I'm avoiding having that straight edge there. And I just think that's going to look a little better. But you'll see how I handle that background. And I'm just getting rid of a little bits here and there that I may not like. It definitely, I have three more images from this napkin and one more napkin, napkin because you purchased two from Ninny's napkins. And this will definitely find its way on, in all likelihood, a canvas as well, where I may use several components from the napkin. I'm using my fluid matte medium from Liquitex Basics. And I love using that. I use a lot. I find that helps. I'm not overly picky about making it perfectly smooth. I love the texture in mixed media, so I want to keep that. And I'm putting very light pressure on the top. Napkins become very fragile when wet, so you need to be gentle or you may end up ripping them. And I use a brush that has softer bristles, again, because I want to be gentle when that napkin's wet. And I'm just tweaking off some here. This is just the perfectionist side of me coming out. It really doesn't matter, especially with what I'm going to be doing soon. I dry the edges and just cut off that paper. Now here I'm taking some of that paint mixed with white gesso and just rubbing it over the edges. This gets rid of any of that hard edge and helps meld your background with the napkin. I'm not being overly precise. I'm not trying to make it a perfectly straight cut edge. I'm just trying to basically hide the fact that I've decoupaged something on there. I'm making it just work together better. Now I want to start colorizing that background. I could have left it that color, but I want to build off of the colors that are in the napkin. And there's orange, there's a little pink, and there's yellow. So I'm using uh, magenta, medium magenta, iron oxide, and orange. And I'm mixing that with a little bit of white gesso till I get colors very similar to what is in the napkin. So I'm using the artistic vision of the artists of the napkin to add to the colors of my background. Now here, where it goes to the coils, I want it to look like the napkin continued without plugging up those holes, which is why I'm painting it instead of decoupaging the napkin on there. 
So I'm just very lightly rubbing this color over top of the texture. I want to bring out that pattern. I chose it because the lines on that Fantangle stencil from the Crafters Workshop worked really well with the lines that are on that Summer Dahlia napkin. And I'm just rubbing this on here, building up the color. Some is more pink, some is more orange. I'm not trying to get it all one tone. In fact, I'm trying to avoid that. And I want to bring out that texture and background. And quite honestly, here's where I wasn't sure how it was all going to come together. So I put, put some on, I take some off, and you're going to see me doing that dance as I'm looking at it. And then I step back and I hold it away from me and I look again. Now, if I was using the Summer Dahlia on a bigger background, like a canvas, I would have incorporated a little more texture areas and then I could really bring that up. This is a fairly small area and not much isn't covered by the napkin. So I have that flat space and I know that I'm going to put my sentiment there, but I'm not happy with how that works. I am thinking, oh, maybe I can put the stencil back on and put modeling paste. And I thought, oh, you know what? I want the illusion that it's there. So maybe if I just stencil the pattern on, it'll look like it continues. And then when I put the sentiment on, that will all be good. Because remember, it's easier to put the sentiment on or to stamp if it's a smooth surface. And I'm going back and forth till I get what I like. I don't want to just plain. I know I need color there. I know I need a little bit more pattern. So now's the time to play and figure those things out. And remember, when you're art journaling, you don't have to have every step figured out. You will figure it out as you go. Every decision you make is going to shape what you're going to have to do later. I'm just edging the sides of the cover. And I know that I am going to be do also colorizing the inside cover and the back. I'm not sure if you noticed at the beginning, whatever cover was there, it actually had a pattern. And I put a couple layers of white gesso on first. So I want to bring out some of the flower here, enhance it. And instead of using the floating acrylic technique, I decided to grab my ink tense blocks and I matched a color. And I'm just shading with that color. Now, why would I choose the ink tense blocks as opposed to the magenta paint? The ink tense blocks are ink, so they are permanent like acrylic. And I have all the colors and they're very transparent. You're going to get a light wash of color. So that's why I've chosen them. It's not something I've done often, but you know what? I have this wonderful tool, these ink tense blocks, and I really want to use them more. And this is a way, a place where that I, I do a lot of shading and highlighting. And I will be bringing out these ink tense blocks for this because they are perfect. You can see how I'm just tweaking it because I want that summer dahlia focal image to stand out more. Now that I've got the background and it's similar colors, I want this dahlia to, to stand out. So I'm building up the color layer. I do have a whole series of videos using Inktense blocks. They are a incredible 
mixed media tool. When I started, that's what I started with. And I played around and figured out a lot of ways to use it in mixed media. So while they are a bit of an investment going in, they are so incredibly versatile and have so many uses. It is definitely, there. while there are some art journaling supplies that I regret having purchased because I simply don't use them, this is not one of them, the ink tents blocks and the pencils. Now I'm coming in with a little bit of white highlight. And I'm not sure if this is on camera, but I also come in with a little bit of gold. Just, you know, you got to have bling. So at this time, I'm looking and I'm liking how the elements are working, how this, the modeling paste stenciling and the Dahlia shapes and lines are working together really nicely. They very making a very cohesive page. But I'm thinking something's missing. And I'm not sure what at this point in time. And when you have that situation and you're not sure, it's like, yeah, I like it, but it's not quite. Often give it some time. Set it aside. Here I'm rubbing gold over it because I'm thinking maybe that's what's missing. Maybe it just needs that little bit of shimmer and that's going to make it pop. I'm adding some splatters. That's just going to tie the whole page together a little bit. Going back and forth, adding more of the ink tents block. So you spend a lot of time, and a lot of this didn't even get on video, but you're tweaking it. And I, I want to be honest with how much time isn't in the video. Because you, if you're going to try to redo, reproduce this, you need to know that it's going to take longer than the 25-minute video. And I decide I'm going to grab my brown and there's that little bit of brown brown in the napkin and I'm very very lightly pressing it over the just the highest parts and this just makes everything work together this was the missing element there's not a lot of brown in there but it brings out that texture warms up the page ties in with the brown that's in the middle of the dahlia and on the butterfly and then I'm edging with the brown again. Black would have been too much, but the brown just is perfect. Now, I had stamped the word imagine on there, and I wasn't quite happy with how it fit, and I thought I could do better. So because it's stamped with acrylic paint and not ink, I can go back and wipe it off with a baby wipe. There's my prototype just to get the spacing, and I'm using my wooden blocks, and I'm stamping them in the acrylic paint. and stamping on them. I love the effect that this gives and this is why I wanted to keep that flat space without any texture or anything. So there you go. I, I It wasn't quite the perfect stamp so I can erase it and come back.
Now, if I had texture there, I could stamp this onto tissue paper and cut that out and glue it on and the tissue paper would go translucent and you would just have the stamping. So there is a way even if you have texture. But I'm loving how that looks. I have some of that brown paint on there, so I add a little bit more water, grab my fan brush, and I'm going to splatter with brown. And again, that brown, there's not a lot of it, but it just made everything come together. And sometimes you need that little bit of contrast. The shimmer from the gold works so well. So now I'm colorizing the inside of the cover. And then I do the back, but I don't do that on camera. And I'm just mixing those colors right on this background. With some gesso. And I'm being careful because now, remember, I have my finished cover on the other side. I don't want to get paint where I don't want paint. I don't want to wreck what I have. So, you know, make sure your surface is clean. And make sure your cover, the front other side, is dry. So now I'm taking that Fantangle stencil and stenciling those same colors all on to this background. It's very faint, it's kind of tone on tone. I find because some paint gets on the on the inside cover while you're doing the front that this is necessary to paint this out. And it's somewhat uneven. Sometimes you got splotches where the paint has dried. It's imperfect. So stenciling and splattering on this kind of hides those imperfections. So I'm looking and I'm thinking, oh, I'm not exactly happy with it. So I grab the white gesso. And I'm just stenciling some of that pattern on just to bring out the pattern, lighten it a little bit. And I'm just liking this better. And I'm just doing it all over. I'm not even lining this up. So you're having layers, even though it's a quick, easy way of getting layers and the front and the back are working together. I've got some gold and I'm just going to, if I can get it out of the tube, stencil with some gold as well. The front, the inside of the front cover, you're going to see a lot. The back, well, not so much. So I do a very simple treatment there. I colorize it and splatter, but the front, because you're gonna open it and you're going to see it. I wanted it to be a little bit more special, but not a whole lot of work. So when this journal cover is completely dry, and I'll give it a couple days, I will be putting a couple coats of Minwax polycrylic satin or gloss varnish. And then I will assemble it into the journal. And it's ready for craft fair season. So here is the finished journal. I absolutely love it. I love how all the elements work together. Give me a thumbs up 
leave me a comment. Check out the affiliate links in the description box. Follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Keep creating.